everybody. So let's continue our session and uh, welcome Mr. Gabriel Mazaracha. <laughs> okay, hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, taking the time to attend to my presentation today. My name is Gabriel. I'm a solutions architect with Bdefender. I'm working in Bdefender for about five years, uh, quite a long time now. But uh, let's not talk too much about me because I'm not uh, the main attraction of this uh, of this presentation today. Uh, today uh, we are going. I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, what it means to be vulnerable, because this is one of the main concern of today: the vulnerabilities in our devices, how the attackers are getting the foothold inside our infrastructure and inside our own houses, and what is the techno the comp the human uh, human technology blend. So as an agenda, uh, we, we will talk a little bit about the vulnerability uh, market, uh, the threats, Internet of Things, what the Internet of Things are bringing new on the market. We are talking about the data, the data privacy, what is, why the data is very valuable for the attackers and there are more and more data breaches. How the attackers uh, are getting inside the infrastructures, just a few examples. And what is the business trend in the security? What you need to know about the security in order to protect against this type of, uh, of breaches? At the end, if we still have time, we can have a Q&A session. If not, at the party after the, the event, we can have the uh, Q&A over a beer. Um, this is the human technology blend. Basically, we are surrounded about the technology the entire day of our life. At work, of course, everyone has technology around it. The phone, the laptop, uh, printers, and so on and so forth. How many of you are using uh, an application to pay, a, a payment application as uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay? So quite a few, myself as well, because it makes the life very easy. You don't have to bring your wallet with you. Uh, you can pay with the phone. You add uh, multiple cards inside the application and so on. And we have everything. Everywhere we have technology. In the traffic, we have technology. Uh, at, on vacation, in space, of course, smart cities, smart rooms, everything is going to be smart by bringing the IoTs. But the life is not that easy. With all these uh, advantages that the IoTs are bringing to us to, be, to have an accessible way to do the things, there are the other guys that are thinking about uh, exploiting this technology in order to gain data or to steal money. And this go, uh, uh, follows to vulnerabilities. So vulnerabilities are that those flows uh, in the software over on an application or a hardware that can be exploited in order to gain access to that device. Uh, if we check uh, the statistics, uh, between uh, 2018 and 2019, we can see a uh, growth of, of uh, at 24.48 percent more uh, critical and uh, high-level uh, vulnerabilities, according to CVE score. The CVE score above seven. So we, you can compare uh, the the vulnerabilities uh, monthly. Uh, of course, there are some months where the attackers uh, were laziest. Lazier, more lazy than uh, the previous year, but uh, usually it is a growth for the critical vulnerabilities. These are the vulnerabilities that uh, should worry us because these are the most common in the most common application or uh, hardware. In 2019, uh, the vulnerabilities with the score over nine, which are the critical vulnerabilities and very important, 33% of them were uh, discovered in Microsoft products. Windows, uh, let's say, most of them. But not only in Microsoft, because uh, the other devices with other operating systems, as Google, uh, Android, or Mac OSs, are starting to get spread into the, into the world. So more and more attackers are trying to breach those, uh, those uh, systems as well. So we have 25% uh, of the total of nine, uh, over nine uh, score uh, CVs in Google uh, application and 22% in uh, uh, Apple applications. But those were the software vulnerabilities. Uh, then we have the hardware vulnerabilities, which are harder to patch. 
How many of you have heard about Spectre and Meltdown? One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, sold. Uh, so the Spectre and Meltdown uh, were the first hardware vulnerabilities that uh, emerged the market uh, in 2016, 2017, where um, the processors, Intel processors, newer than 2012, uh, were exploit exploited, uh, could be exploited by attackers leveraging the hyperthread technology. Um, how was the call, the technology to, uh, I remember and I'll uh, give it to you the information. In order to exploit the, to get access to, to, the, so, to the operating systems and uh, get out the data of, of it. But um, I don't know how many of you now have heard about uh, SwapGS. Okay, so SwapGS is the same type of uh, vulnerability, also in Intel processors newer than 2012. It is a vulnerability discovered by Bitdefender researchers. Actually, the first um, uh, iteration and when we reported the vulnerability to Intel was about two years ago. And over these two years, uh, they were trying to, to patch and to find a way to patch the, uh, the vulnerability. Uh, we made this, uh, this vulnerability uh, public after one month after the patch was released. So we couldn't uh, just announce it because there would be other people that were just trying to, were trying to get access and uh, uh, use this type of uh, vulnerability that is in the processors. How you can mitigate this type of uh, threats inside the hardware? because it's not that easy as in an application. Uh, first of all, to patch the operati uh, operating system, because the operating system are releasing patches in order to cover the way these processors are, uh, are exploited. Then will be to replace, uh, of course, to replace the hardware or to disable the hyper-threading, which none of them is a solution, because to replace the hardware is very, very costly, and you cannot replace the entire market. And to disable the hyper-threading means that you reduce this, the processing power at, uh, at half. So no one will do that. Another way, uh, here at Bitdefender, we have a solution, a product that is called Hypervisor Memory Introspection, that is doing the uh, introspection of the raw memory at the hypervisor level. So nothing is inside the virtual machines and we are anal analyzing the memory inside the hypervisor. We see exactly in real time what happens in the memory uh, before something reaches to the operating system. And but with this solution, we can mitigate this type of attacks. Uh, if you want to know about more about this solution, it's a new, unique solution on the market. Nobody else is doing that. Uh, we can talk also uh, after, after the presentation, maybe at the end if we have time. Enough with the vulnerabilities. After the vulnerabilities, uh, the threats are coming, and we can see the evolution of the threats. Uh, uh, first of all, in the number of the threats. We can see how, for example, for Windows, uh, uh, no, first of all, the, uh, how many vulnerabilities are uh, on the market. You can see th that from 2000, and they, were they are increasing. This, this report is uh, from AV test, and I, I got it on October 14th. So it's, uh, it's quite new. And we can see that uh, already in 2019, even if the year is not over, we have more malware than in 2018 on the market. And in the right, we can see that uh, also the Android and the Mac OS malwares are became, uh, becoming to be more and more more people are trying to build malware for this type of operating system. One thing here is that uh, for, uh, as Mac, uh, Apple uh, claims that the Mac OS is not uh, penetrable, uh, this type of, uh, these solutions are quite limited on this type of OSs. So uh, attackers are trying to, to, br uh, to break this door. And we can see that from 2010, that were the just uh, 297, malware for Mac OS. We reach in uh, 2018 with uh, about 100,000 malware, new malware. And why do criminals love more than money? The answer is very simple, more money. 
what they want to do, gain money. And I don't think just the cyber criminals love more money. I think we all do. It's, uh, it's uh, what uh, makes us happy today. Uh, four of the most important type of malware on the market uh, are behind me. Uh, so are the ba bank trojans, uh, where the banks are uh, attacked uh, in order to exfiltrate money, to gain money over it. Then we have the ransomware. I think everybody in the room have heard about ransomware. I don't think that it's anything new here. The APT, the Ad Advanced Persistent Threats, uh, the cyber uh, criminal gangs that are uh, building malware specifically, specifically for an organization. This uh, type of, this APT, this type of malware, uh, it's built on a long, uh, in a long period. So it can take uh, one year, two years until they have a good APT and go to breach the, go to breach the, the, the infrastructure of a company. And there is crypto jacking. How many of you have heard ab about crypto jacking? One, two, three, four, five. Good. So the crypto jacking um, is a, a malware that is trying to use the processing power of a computer, but without the, uh, the agreement from the user in order to mine for cryptocurrency. You would think that this is not a very big deal. Is nothing malicious there. This was uh, also the case in the market. No one thought that this is a very big issue. Uh, they are focusing mostly to breach the uh, cloud infrastructure because there the resources are uh, quite unlimited. Let's say as you long pay uh, as long you pay more for for resources. And uh, at the first glance, you think, okay, it's not that, that malicious. But if you have a, a crypto uh, jacking malware in your infrastructure, uh, you'll use more uh, resources, more computing power, more, more memory, RAM memory. So you'll have higher costs. So for, uh, uh, instead of having, uh, let's say, on a host or in a virtual host, uh, 50 machines, you'll go down to 30 machines. And this affects your business directly. It, you, you don't pay the money directly to the customer, so you're not paying from your pocket, but your company is paying at the same time. First, we'll go with an example. I, I think you know about Carbonac, what it is. It's a, uh, it's a gang, an APT gang, that is focusing on, on banks. Uh, this type of, uh, this, uh, this group is building malware for banks in order to attack the ATMs and exfiltrate money. They are uh, synchronizing all the ATMs from a bank to release money at the same time. They have a very uh, well-sustained group that is going, are picking up the money, and then live. Uh, the statistics say that uh, about 150 companies have, have been breached by this, uh, this group. And from each company, they stole between two uh, and a half million uh, euros up to 10 million euros. So this is quite a big, uh, a big group and uh, uh, have earned a bit, uh, a lot of money, about $1 billion dollars they, they are saying. Which for me, it's good money, I don't know. Maybe for you, <laughs> it's, it's, not that, it's not that much. <laughs> uh, one more interesting thing about this, uh, uh, this thing it was, uh, is the fact that uh, they are recruiting and having and enlarging and they, uh, more, most of the sources say that they are still active. So at the moment they are active and uh, trying to bridge more and more infrastructures and companies. For, for this, let's say, after the first uh, uh, stage when he's identifying the target, is to do the reconnaissance, to gather information. This is the part that lasts the longest, the longer. It's like, uh, it can take from six to one year to gather all the information together. What servers are there? What's the security solution? Then after they find what the security solution, to try to bridge the security solution, uh, to find about all the details about the network, software, everything on the, on, uh, on the network. After that, they will uh, inject the infection, infection vector and gain access. Then we go to ransomware versus crypto jacking. So this is the, the statistic for uh, this year uh, for uh, crypto jacking and ransomware. So the ransomware, you can see that uh, this is the line for, uh, for ransomware that is going down. So the attacks with ransomware are going uh, slowly down. While with uh, the crypto jacking, they are going up. 
One of the reasons uh, is the fact that uh, the cryptocurrencies uh, got uh, the prices for cryptocurrency is uh, higher now. So it was in 2018, they was uh, they were also higher. They and then dropped, and now they uh, they got up uh, again. And this is how the attacks for crypto jacking looks like. They are starting to be more and more. And why is that? We have uh, I have here uh, three three reasons, and I think you'll find them uh, acceptable. First of them, with ransomware, only some of the the victims will pay the ransom because we are educated not to pay the ransom in order to not fund the cyber crime. While with crypto jacking, all of the victims of the crypto jacking will pay the money because they will they will be there and they will uh, start to mine for cryptocurrencies. One other reason is the fact that the ransomware is immediately visible. If you are infected with ransomware, you'll have the file infected or you'll have a pop-up or the operating system won't be able to boot. It's visible. You cannot miss it. Uh, while with crypto jacking, the attack is stealth. So you don't see anything. You just go and see that, okay, something is using more resources. You can think about an application, uh, an update for Microsoft or the anti-malware solution, which is the case most of the time, because everybody thinks that uh, if something happens, the anti-malware solution is using uh, more resources. So uh, as the attack is stealth, until you discover it, uh, it can take up to six months, one year, depending uh, on uh, what resources, if you are tied with the resources. If you have a lot of resources and you don't uh, see the impact, immediately you can uh, have the, the attack uh, for a very long time. And with ransomware, you have one upfront pay payment, if you have any, any of them, while with crypto jacking, you're paying the entire, entire time. Uh, day by day, day by day, uh, week by week, you'll have uh, the you'll pay money to the attacker. He'll make money from you. That's enough with the um, uh, with the uh, vulnerabilities and the threats. We're going with uh, the Internet of Things and what uh, change did this uh, this uh, this type of devices bring to our infrastructure. Most of the studies are, uh, are saying that by 2020, we'll have about 20 billion uh, devices, IOTs, uh, in the entire world. Devices that can communicate between them, that are connected to a network, to internet connection, and uh, are communicating, which can be a very big issue. Uh, some of the attacks uh, that happened uh, using the uh, IOT devices, one of the most popular uh, attack is the Mirai. Have you heard about Mirai and uh, what it did? Uh, the Mirai, um, basically, they built a very big uh, network of IOTs. And in 2016, they attacked, they did a DDoS attack on the most uh, important servers. One of them was the OVH server. Uh, most of them uh, been also on the West Coast in the US and most of the, uh, more, a lot of websites couldn't be accessible. The reports show that there was traffic, uh, the com traffic be uh, into the, those uh, websites for about one terabit per second made by these IOTs. There were a lot of IOTs. And th these guys were quite, uh, quite uh, intelligent, not just because they, they developed this, uh, this type of malware, but after they, uh, they made the attack, to not be caught, they released, they made the code public in order to, by other others attackers to go and use the code in order to not be caught because they 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 see activity by the same type of malware everywhere and they they escaped with this. Uh, other type of botnets here we have Bashlight to uh, specialize in, DD, in DDoS. It scans the IP ranges uh, and you can see that uh, last line that uh, can send spam emails. And one of type of IoT is a fridge, for example. It's an IoT, has network connection, can send spam, for example, from a, any type of device. Fridge, uh, I don't know, a light bulb, everything can, can do that. Uh, and uh, Hashime is uh, active since uh, 2016. It's a decentralized command and control server. It operates by uh, BitTorrent. I don't know if you, you are using BitTorrent. I'm not judging anyone. I used to use it <laughs> before Netflix. 
Uh, and the next generation botnets here. We have uh, two of them. Hide and seek, uh, that it's uh, the first one that it, uh, was developed for surveillance and espionage. Is the first one of them that uh, was doing that. It spread via brute force, and I'll tell you why they are successful spreading through the brute force. And VPN filter is the first state sponsored botnet, and it is, it is a f the first uh, command and control botnet that is communicating with the command and control. This is why it makes it special. Um, and now we are going to the hygiene. How you should, you as a an user and the vendor should uh, keep safe uh, with, with, of being breached. Uh, a password should be set as a, as a vendor. You should have a password set uh, by default out of the box on the device. And after that, when the user logs in, to be requested to change the password and also to have a complexity. Because I don't know if you are using a lot of IOTs, but I don't think anyone changes the password after uh, or the default password, or if they are logging in to change the password. I think no one does it. I'm not doing it. Uh, then uh, they should make sure that there are no hidden backdoors uh, left intentionally by them, no hard-coded uh, hard credentials uh, inside the, the firmware, and to acknowledge and fix all the reports that co are coming from the market, from the users of being uh, vulnerabilities. As a user, you should make sure that you change the password. You, you need to make uh, to do that. You need to run a vulnerability assessment if you have the possibility, but at least you need to, to change, check for updates and apply those updates on your IOTs. And also, if you have uh, IOTs that uh, don't have any patches for, vulnerabil for uh, vulnerabilities, we need to retire them or at least uh, not keeping them uh, connected in the network. Because this is the reason, these are the reasons why the attackers can get in. Uh, that uh, 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 that botnet that is using uh, the brute force to to get I IOTs uh, are successful because no one change are changing the password. So what I mean that mean is not a very big, uh, very hard password to to, uh, to breach. What is the value of data data privacy and why they are doing uh, the attackers are trying to get and uh, more and more uh, information about data from uh, from the market. Uh, someone said that uh, the data is not the new oil in the world, it's the new uranium because of the value that the data has today. And there, there were a lot of uh, data, data breaches uh, in the world as uh, Equifax, everybody heard about that. There, there were Marriott that uh, uh, were breached and exposed over uh, 330 million data from uh, their customers. But the f most recent and biggest one uh, was uh, this year uh, from a financial uh, company. I won't say the name, but most, most likely you'll find it if you search for it, uh, where uh, they exposed over 885 million data uh, on the market. So uh, this financial uh, institution uh, is doing assurances, mortgages, so the data that was visible wasn't just simply, uh, let's say, Yahoo accounts as they, they was with Yahoo. There were uh, driving licenses, uh, assurances, everything was there and were, was, were exposed. So it's a very, very big, uh, was a very big issue. Uh, the digital, what the internet uh, are keeping, what data is, uh, are you exposing in the internet about yourself? Beside the first name, last name, passwords, you are, there are websites where you are uh, entering the bank accounts, passwords, uh, everything are stored in the internet. But the issue is, are not, uh, well, there is an issue that the governments are keeping data from us, but the most data from, uh, that uh, are uh, related to us, it's uh, held from uh, the dark web. And uh, this is the most part and the most dangerous uh, uh, part of the internet that can use your information against you. How they use the information against you, it's very very simple, not very legal. Uh, identity card fraud, uh, credit card fraud, uh, doxing, uh, when they're exposing uh, the data about you on the internet, uh, account hijacking, blackmailing, you receive emails, well, there are also some uh, 
spams that and phishing that are saying that, okay, I discovered that you are doing something wrong on the internet. If you don't want to go public, just give me some money. They are quite good uh, built, but if you find, if you search closely, you'll see that uh, it's a robotic message that, uh, and if you are in li distribution, li distribution list, for example, you'll receive emails like, okay, hello, Mr. B Defender, something like this, and you, you'll saw that that is not that uh, accurate. But for some of them, it works. So there are some paranoid people that uh, are willing to pay for not uh, finding the, their secrets. Um, but how, how the attackers can get a foothold inside the infrastructures, inside your infrastructures? Uh, I, see, I put in on my slides uh, three, three reasons. Uh, first of them, as I said, unpatched application and operating systems. Uh, these are the most important, uh, uh, one of the most important reasons, because after a patch is released, not uh, 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 no matter how important it is, if we it just can talk about the WannaCry uh, uh, ransomware. It was in 2016 when, uh, in May, uh, Microsoft released the patch that patch patches Eternal Blue. Eternal Blue was the vulnerability through which uh, WannaCry got inside the infrastructure and encrypted everything, and did lateral movements and encrypted everything. So the, the patch came in, uh, in May, and the attack came in July, I think. So it, uh, in two months, nobody, uh, most of the people uh, were, were not patching the, the operating systems. And uh, the, this Eternal Blue was a buffer overflow attack over SMB protocol. And most of the SMB protocols were exposed to the internet and it was a very easy for attackers just to get in. And it was the first uh, ransomware that could be, um, could, be, could uh, encrypt the machines without user agreement. So uh, by exploiting this vulnerability, you will have uh, instantly the system, access, system admin access and you can do everything from there. It's, uh, it was uh, that big vulnerability. Uh, what, how can you mitigate this? It's uh, by using a uh, patch management uh, application or a software uh, or an application whitelisting software. We, in Bitdefender, we offer uh, both type of, uh, of these type of modules. You can scan for patches that are missing. You'll have a catalog with everything about that patch. If it has a CSV, CV, CV, CV uh, number associated and how critical it is. And with application whitelisting, uh, the solution will scan for all the applications uh, on, a, on, the, on an endpoint. And from that list, you have a very big catalog. You can choose what application can run on, on your device. Everything that is not in that list will be blocked. So you'll add a very big, uh, very big, uh, uh, very high, prote uh, high protection uh, over this type of attacks because nothing else will run. Well, remain the, the application that you at least did, so uh, that can be the entry points. Uh, the other reason are the employees. Uh, the Ponemon Institute said that 87% of the incidents are caused by the employees. 87, so a very big, a very large number. I know that I read about a study made by a company that wanted to test their employees. So they, uh, they hired the company and uh, gave some uh, USB drives with some uh, company logo on it and just throw them in the parking lot. In two weeks, all of them were connected inside the infrastructure, inside the company. Just like this. It was very simple to, to prove that the employees are a very weak link in the attack, attack vectors. Because uh, even if they are, uh, most of them are not educated. So there are not en enough trainings to raise awareness for the employees to know what they need to do and what they cannot do inside the company's uh, uh, premises and with the company's assets. Uh, most of them think that everything can be done there. So um, they are not uh, at all uh, concerning about the security. And also with this, uh, this study, they said that 25% of the attacks were done by malicious employees. So 
employees that are not very happy and just do something malicious. Uh, and another uh, reason is uh, exposing too much data to the internet. Uh, basically, uh, there are a lot of companies that are not controlling very much what happens uh, in their demilitar demilitarized zone, in their DMZs. Uh, there are points in the servers there, but not controlling uh, very, very tight what, uh, uh, what ports are open, what connection should be allowed, and stuff like this. And by this, uh, the attackers can, can try to reach inside the, inside the company, uh, doing a brute force maybe, and uh, other attacks, vulnerability scanning, and so on and so forth. And to prevent this, it's quite simple, control better and adjust uh, the, the settings to limit uh, any unnecessary connections. As business trends here, uh, we have uh, a graphic, uh, okay, from the total of 100% of total malware uh, on the market today, uh, most of them can be blocked by any advanced uh, solution, security solution on the market. The issue uh, is uh, with this less than 1% uh, um, malware on the market that are zero-day obfuscated malware, fileless attacks, and so on and so forth. Uh, this uh, is uh, mostly the most dangerous type of, of, uh, of malware and the most hard to, to catch. And how you, you should be able to protect against this, uh, this one, less than 1% malware on the market? You need to have protection in different stages. At the stage one, you need to have this hardening and control layer, where you limit the surface of an attack and for the attacker, from the point of view of the attacker, increase the cost of the attack. So as a hardening and control, you can use a, uh, modules as uh, application whitelisting, content control to uh, to control the traffic that uh, is going to, to your endpoints, firewalls, of course, device control to limit what the employees can connect to, to an endpoint, to, for example, to block every external storage uh, to connect to your, um, to your endpoints, full disk encryption, none of them in case you have remote workers that are taking the laptops as I am, I'm with the laptop uh, in Riga today, I'm from Bucharest. Uh, to have the disk encrypted in case of you lose the device or someone stole, uh, stole the, steal the device, uh, they cannot access the data on that laptop. They need to decrypt the disk first and it takes a, uh, that long time that the data after they are decrypting it is not any more uh, relevant. And also patch management, to, be, to have a clear overview inside your infrastructure what patches are missing from your devices and to be able to patch them. After, if the, something goes through this uh, hardening and control uh, stage, it will go in the pre-execution stage. You need to have uh, controls in pre-execution to see if there is any malware. And you need to have controls very advanced with uh, machine learning, beside the, anti uh, the classic anti-malware, advanced machine learning mechanism that it's uh, focusing on this type of attacks, of this 1%, which can be targeted attacks, uh, grayware, fileless attacks, and so on. If it goes through this type of, uh, uh, of uh, protection, and the, this protection cannot take a clear answer, this file is malicious or this file is clean, there can be some suspicion to have a sandbox analyzer to be sent automatically into that sandbox analyzer where you have an environment, an isolated environment, and the file is executed there, uh, analyzed in real time, and after that, you'll have a full report with what the, that file did. So you'll have, okay, this file uh, writes these uh, uh, files, moves these files, created some processes co connected to the internet, and this behavior to be explained in a report. And after, uh, if the not, it does nothing malicious in, in that time, the file will be executed. After it is executed, you need to monitor from the beginning up till the end of the process with zero trust. So you, you need to have uh, protection as exploit pro prevention to see if uh, that, uh, that processing is doing some shady uh, shady actions uh, inside the, the, your infrastructures are trying to exploiting some vulnerabilities or 
pro and also pr process inspector. So for every action that the process is taking, uh, to give uh, a rating. After it reaches a, a, a certain threshold, the process can be blocked. And that's how you can keep yourself more protected uh, from that type of, uh, of uh, attacks. Of course, this, uh, this, uh, beside the endpoint protection, you should have something in the per perimeter protection also uh, to make sure that uh, nothing happens there. We at Bdefender, we also have a solution for network. It's called Network Traffic, Traffic Security Analytics. Uh, it's basically a tool for breach detection. Uh, it monitors the connection that the device is doing. In case of a breach, uh, if someone breaches your infrastructure, at some point you need to make an external communication in order to get some information or to uh, exfiltrate the data. We, using this, uh, this type of technology, we'll be able to see that connection. We'll be able to see port scan in the network, even if the, the devices are not having anything. You imagine the IOTs, because on the IOTs, you are not able to put something uh, on them as an endpoint protection. But having a network solution, you'll be able to, to monitor the activity uh, of, uh, of the, those devices. Uh, I think that was it. Uh, from me today. Uh, if you have any questions now, I don't know if we have time. <laughs>